Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. Today's video was voted by my lovely patrons, which as you can tell judging from the title, I'm going to be sharing some ways on how to fill up your sketchbook. I am using a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook and will be using a variety of different art materials that I will try my best to list on the screen and in the description as we go along. But before we get into the rest of the video, I just wanted to quickly talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I know that many of you are working or aspiring artists yourselves, and I often get questions about how to get started. Obviously, there are many different factors and avenues that we can take as artists, but I do think one of the universal key elements for any creator is having a website that presents your body of work. And the great thing about Squarespace is that it caters to all types of professionals, whether you need to showcase images, videos, to have an online shop, and more. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. So my first suggestion on what to draw in your sketchbook is to do studies from still life or from a photograph. This was something that I did a lot of when I was in high school and college, where you would just draw random objects that you had lying around. Of course, you can definitely set up a more appealing scene slash assortment of objects, or if you're lazy like me, you can also work from photographs. The photo study that I'm working on in this page is from the Instagram still life still here, where they provide an assortment of still life photography, specifically prompting artists to recreate them in their own way. I highly recommend checking it out because they also share the, some of the artists work of the photographs. And it's really interesting to see all the different interpretations from all these different artists. As some of you may know, I do an exclusive live stream over on my Patreon page once a month, and it has been a really great opportunity for me to brush up on my drawing skills. I'm primarily an artist that prefers to draw people, but it's important to spend time working on different subjects so that you can incorporate them into your usual work. Overall, it will just help strengthen your skills as an artist, and I think that it's good to branch out into different things once in a while. But if still lifes are just not your thing, you can always pick photographs that you've taken yourself as well, whether it be of your pets, friends, scenery while traveling, etc. Plus, recreating your own photographs makes it much more personal and in some ways can almost feel like a journal entry, which I think makes for a really nice touch. My next sketchbook idea is to take suggestions or requests from somebody else. In the case of this page, I asked my patrons for some themes or objects on what they would like to see me work on for this live stream. And many of them had mentioned things such as pink lemonade, fruit, pool floaties, etc., which gave me the idea to do a summer themed sketchbook page. Of course, not everyone has a Patreon page, so you could definitely ask your followers on whatever social media platform you have, or you could always ask friends and family for ideas as well. This way, all of the decision making is left up to someone else, and it's likely that people might suggest you to draw something that you never would have thought of, which I think is a great exercise of getting out of your comfort zone. I know that sometimes it can feel intimidating to draw something that you're not familiar with, but I think the key thing with a sketchbook is that its purpose should be for practice and experimenting. So try to let go of that fear of potentially creating a quote unquote ugly drawing and see it more as a learning experience. For example, on this summer theme page, I drew a seashell that in my opinion was not very successful, but then later on I drew a flamingo pool floaty that I think turned out really cute. So much so that I really want to incorporate a pool floaty into a future illustration. My third sketchbook suggestion is to participate in art challenges. For those of you who are fairly active in the art social media community, you are probably already familiar with some of the various art prompts that have gone around online. One of the most common ones is the draw this in your style challenges, which is where an artist will create an illustration specifically for the purpose of prompting others to recreate it in their own art style. 
Similar to the previous two suggestions, this allows you to focus on the drawing and painting rather than having to think of something yourself since the reference image is already ready for your interpretation. I think that staring at a blank page in a sketchbook can feel really daunting sometimes because you just can't think of anything creative that day. So in doing this draw this in your style challenge, someone else has already done the creative work for you, or at least you have much, have a much more clear starting point since they've already laid out the groundwork for you. That being said, I think it's really important to note here though, that if you choose to post your recreation of this person's work, you need to be very clear on the fact that the original concept and character was not yours and you need to credit the artist, uh, the original artist appropriately. On this page, I decided to recreate Charlie Clements' super adorable portrait. There were a number of things that I really enjoyed about her illustrations, such as the color palette, fashion style, and the graphic patterns. And while I really loved the still life elements and posing of this character, I decided that I would simplify my version since I didn't want to spend too much time working on this and I just wanted to focus on my favorite parts. And as many of you might know, baby pink is my favorite color. And even though I decided to omit the pink table that was in the original drawing, I knew I still wanted to include it in my version. So I decided to use that for the background color instead. And then I changed the flower colors so that they wouldn't, um, you know, blend into the background. And as you saw, I decided to use gouache paint for the background instead of a paint marker since I knew that was going to be a lot of surface coverage. So paint just made more sense. And then here you can see I was swatching the red paint marker and then a huge blob of paint just leaked out of the pen. And it just seemed like a waste to, to let it sit there. So I went ahead and actually used a paintbrush to scoop up the leaked paint and use it like regular paint instead. And I think that um, it ended up being a great way to be resourceful and not have that paint go to waste. And if a draw this in your style challenge doesn't suit your fancy, there's tons of other ones out there such as the three color challenge where you randomly pick three colors of markers or paint tubes and you have to create something using those colors. Or there's the six fan arts challenge, there's the screen cap redraw challenge and many, many more. For my fourth sketchbook suggestion is to experiment with art supplies. So for this page, I decided to bust out this palette that had a bunch of dried up watercolor paints on it. And instead of washing off the paint down the drain, I thought that why not use it up on this sketchbook page? So not only am I using just using up my art supplies rather than wasting it, I'm also getting a unexpected result since these paints were predetermined from past me from weeks ago when I did a different painting. My personal go-to subject is portraits. So I went ahead and sketched out a face while using my tried and true erasable colored pencil. And then when I'm happy with the sketch, I do a cleaner pass with a darker colored pencil so that uh, it's still visible when I begin painting. And again, in the spirit of keeping things uh, casual and experimental, I just loosely threw on some colors to create an interesting wash on our subject. I let the first layer dry and then I did a second pass of color to build up that saturation since I find that with watercolors, they do tend to dry a little lighter than when they are wet.
For those of you who are part of my Patreon page or if you see my stories on Instagram, you might know that lately I have been doing a lot of sketching with a ballpoint pen. Normally, I do my sketching and studies using my erasable colored pencil, which of course you see me use all the time, but I've realized that there's just something really satisfying about using a ballpoint pen, and I think it's because obviously you get that very stark contrast of the pen versus like the white of the paper as opposed to the colored pencil but also it forces me to be more decisive since I can't erase my lines over and over again like I would with that erasable pencil and for those of you who don't know I hate using graphite pencils I just find they smudge everywhere and it just is not appealing to me so using a ballpoint pen has been a, a really fun and new discovery for me and yeah, up until now, I was using the ballpoint pen on its own to sketch with, but recently I saw Chris Hong use a ballpoint pen in conjunction with watercolors for some portrait studies. And I thought that it was just such an interesting combination that I never would have thought of. So of course I thought I should give it a go. And so that's what I decided to do for this portrait. And I think it creates a pretty unique result. I've definitely come to the conclusion that sketching in eyebrows with a ballpoint pen is probably one of my favorite things ever. You really get that perfect feathery line. And I find that with ballpoint pen, you really do you really do have control over getting really, really fine light lines and then having much bolder, darker lines if you use enough pressure. Whereas I find that with fine liners, you don't get quite as much variances with them. And so, yeah, I really, really enjoy using ballpoint pen. It's really, really fun. And yeah, I decided to go for blue because I'm just a sucker for color, but of course you can definitely get other colors or you could go with a classic black as well. Which by the way, this is just one of those office Bic ballpoint pens that you get in a 12 pack for like $2. I think that not only is the sketchbook showing off experimenting with art mediums, but it's also a good example of the fact that you don't necessarily need to use quote unquote fancy art supplies to create something. Of course, you don't have to stick to this particular mixed media combination. Feel free to use whatever art supplies that you currently already own and see what you can come up with. You might be surprised at what art supplies you like using together, whether it be watercolor and pen or gouache and colored pencil. You could even throw in like collage or some washi tape, stickers, scrapbooking paper, even your own photographs. Like just, you know, try and think outside of the box and just have fun with it. And my fifth and final sketchbook suggestion is to draw fan art. For those of you who are familiar with my channel and my artwork, you're probably not all that surprised at this suggestion. I know that fan art is not something that everyone is interested in, whether it be watching me and, and hearing me talk about it or doing it themselves. So I purposely saved it for last. However, I personally have so much fun creating fan art. So I always like to do it and also include it in my videos. Recreating my favorite characters in my style is actually what got me into making art in the first place way back in my preteen and teen years. So it's something that I always fall back on and it's both nostalgic and kind of therapeutic. 
Earlier in the month, I had done this two color highlight experiment for the July Patreon sticker design using markers and colored pencils. And the result ended up being way more successful than I had expected. And yeah, I think that I got the idea from just seeing a lot of really interesting photos on Pinterest of these kind of neon lights uh, hitting portraits from two different angles and they're two different neon lights. And I actually even worked on a portrait of myself in a similar manner. And so I think just a combination of those things got me thinking of trying to do it myself again, but traditionally, because the, the time that I had done that portrait, I used a digital program. And I have been working with alcohol markers and colored pencils for quite some time now. And while I have definitely been getting more and more comfortable with using them, I always felt like there was something missing. And when I looked at my previous marker illustrations, they just felt kind of boring. And I realized over time that I think I was just being a little bit too timid in my color choices and with my line art. So with that sticker design, I decided to really push for bolder color choices and I also went for thicker line art as well. And as a result, I think that the overall look is just much more dynamic because there was definitely that case in how I'm sure you have experienced this as well when you find that your sketch or your line art looks better than your finished result of this fully rendered colored illustration. And I think one of the things that I noticed was that my sketches, the line art was always a lot thicker. And then when I would do the final illustration, the line art would be much thinner. So yeah, I was able to combine the two for something in the middle. And yeah, with these portraits, I tried to go into the mindset of just making choices mainly based on what would be visually appealing and focused way less on being concerned with things being, you know, quote unquote, realistic or accurate. Obviously, my work has never been intended to be realism in the first place, but I think that putting myself in this mindset of having fun and not having these self-imposed rules or boundaries really let me be bolder in my art choices, whether it be with the colors or the line art. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen that I drew Midoriya and Shinso from My Hero Academia in this style already. And if I'm being totally honest, working on these portraits has probably been the most fun I've had making art in quite a while. Like I was just having the best time working on them and I couldn't wait to show y'all on Instagram and I was just so excited to work on the next one. It's been a really great feeling just finding that kind of spark again because I feel like for quite a while I was just sort of going through the motions and there was just something really exciting about working on these portraits and just getting such an amazing and positive response from everyone on Instagram as well. Again, I think there's just something very nostalgic about making fan art for me because that's just where it all began in terms of my art journey. And while of course these are new characters, they're not uh, the, like this show didn't exist when I was a teenager, but the the whole like connecting with people online over our shared love and nerdiness over these characters is what makes it feel very nostalgic for me in terms of my, you know, the roots of my, my art journey of sharing my work online. So anyway, it's been really, really fun. And I hope that everyone who loved the Midoriya and Shinso portrait also enjoys this Bakugo one. Cause honestly, I think it turned out pretty, pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I decided to film this process of me working on Bakugo because I've already shown Shinso and Todoroki on my channel before. And Bakugo is actually my number one favorite character from My Hero Academia. So it felt fitting to finally have him and feature him on my channel. 
And while I did have a blast working on this portrait, I did put a little bit of pressure on myself because one, I was filming it, and two, he's my favorite. But yeah, also his overall color palette is so far from what I normally work in, which posed a bit of a challenge as well since his hero costume is mainly dark green and orange, which are two colors I don't normally use in general, let alone together. Although now that I say this, I do realize I used that exact color combo while drawing Daria Morgendorfer in a previous video. But again, it's not normally a color palette I, I generally go for. And while I chose to make these portraits featuring these characters wearing modern clothes, I still wanted to make sure I had nods to their original character designs so that it would help make them more recognizable and feel true to their character as well. And so when I went into this uh, portrait series of the My Hero Academia characters, I knew that I wanted them to be covered in band-aids and stickers. I think it's just adorable and very 90s. And as a kid of the 90s, I'm just very much into any aesthetics that has a callback to that decade. And yeah, so with the color choices in the band-aids and the topics that I chose or the themes for the stickers, I wanted it to be a callback to the characters. And so of course with Bakugo, I have a little bomb and a little grenade, which obviously are a nod to his hero powers, his quirk. And then I chose to put in a little devil emoji because we all know he's very aggressive and initially seen as a villain so it seemed fitting to to throw that in i didn't make it purple like the emoji the iphone emoji is i decided to go with that hot pink just so it matches the overall color palette and yeah now that i've finished bakugo and i already have midoriya and shinso i'm also going to be doing todoroki in this style and then i will be calling it a day for this my hero academia series for now and then I'm going to also turn them into stickers because I think they're really fun and I think they'll make for a really cute set. I'm not sure if I'll do maybe postcards or mini prints but definitely going to be doing stickers so look out uh, for that post on my Instagram when I have them ready in my shop. <music> And yeah, that concludes my five suggestions on how to fill up your sketchbook. I hope that you got some good ideas. I know that maybe they seem kind of obvious, but I feel like sometimes when we open up a sketchbook and we look at that blank page, we're just like totally out of ideas. And so hopefully this helps give you some ideas or kickstart some motivation or inspiration for you to work in your sketchbook. And yeah, i am got two more pages left in this thing and now I can finally do a sketchbook tour. So look out for that. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have an amazing day or evening and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.